All right, guys. Um, forgive me. First of all, I'm fighting through a little bit of a. I don't know. I don't know if it's a, a bug or what, but I'm not in top form tonight. So forgive me if uh, I don't have my fastball, so to speak. Uh, in this game, the Dallas Mavericks went to the Oklahoma City Thunder for the last game of this three-game road trip, and they had they came into the game with a nine and one record uh, after a loss. Only once this year had they lost back-to-back games, that being at Boston and then at the New York Knicks. Dallas also came into this game with a road record of 12-4. and And while the offense wasn't good here in this game for Dallas for the most part, you still got an awful lot of good out of Luka for the most part. It got a little shaky at the very end when OKC kind of swiped it out from underneath us, it felt like. But... Uh, Dallas should have won this game. I know you find out right before the game that, I mean, I didn't expect Tim Hardaway Jr. to play, even though they were saying all day he was questionable. They eventually downgraded him to out right before the game started. However, you get the notification that Kristaps Porzingis was going to be out as well with what they're calling right knee soreness. I think it's more just load management. I don't think it's anything major, but that immediately changes things up because suddenly you have Powell and Maxi in your starting lineup and as you can kind of see from the stat board there next to me, Luca didn't get a whole lot of help tonight. Like Luca nearly goes around and gets another triple double. He scores 17 points in the first quarter alone, almost 19, but they, they review his buzzer beater and determine that it is still making contact with his hand as the light goes red. Ergo, no buzzer beater for Luca in that case. So 17 points. After the first quarter, Luca this season is phenomenal. He's the number one in the NBA in terms of first quarter scoring and third quarter scoring. And I believe those are like 9.8 and 9.6 points respectively in those quarters. So Luca's damage comes in the, those two quarters predominantly. And you saw it with this game. He, he established the rhythm early on for Dallas and that allowed them to kind of build out to a little bit of a lead, although it wore back on them. By the time halftime rolled around, it was a much closer game, it felt like. Or it ended up being a much closer game than it should have. Dallas was only up 51-50 at half. Uh, They were shooting only 35% from the field, 26% from three. Now, neither team was lighting it up in that regard. OKC was a miserable 12%. So Dallas, 6 of 23 on threes in the first half, compared to OKC, 2 of 17. Uh, OKC doing a little bit better. Uh, in that regard, 41% in the you know in the half court kind of set compared to just 35% for the Mavericks, and you know one thing that I, I kind of circled early on in that first half, I was a little concerned because because while Dallas was getting to the line 11 of 16, they weren't converting enough of them. Luca I think missed three free throws in the first half, uh, and that was that was a concern for me. Was you're leaving free points out there. And OKC, I I said before this last, I said at the end of this last game that you have to watch OKC. They've had a real role as of late. They they've been a much better team than they started the year, and they were seventh in the West. I think they're still there right now. Let me double check that. Uh, yeah, they're still sitting at seventh in the West. Still a couple games, three games precisely behind the Utah Jazz for the sixth seed. But they've won three in a row at this point. And as I said earlier, Dallas has now lost two straight for the second time this season. And it's interesting that as good as they've been on the road, four of those losses you know, inc- were paired with another loss. Four of those road losses were paired with a loss. That's, that's kind of interesting to me. Only the Toronto one uh, has really been isolated in that regard. So Dallas 12-5 and five now on the road this season. Starting to kind of lose a little bit of the sheen off of that Road Warrior label I liked to give them. They were 12-2, and two, and now here we are uh, sitting where we are. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little suspect. Or maybe they were 11-2. and two. Yeah, they were 11-2, and two, beat the Warriors. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's, uh, it is what it is, man. Like, <clears throat> this game got away from you at the very end, and it's a shame for that to happen because I felt like Dallas largely outplayed OKC. They weren't knocking down shots the way they wanted to. 
Uh, they they struggled a little bit with Stephen Adams' size inside. He he ha- is one of those unique guys. He's not going to dominate a game in a lot of in a lot of ways, like on the boards. Uh, Ten and eleven for him in twenty five minutes, but I felt like he was a presence nevertheless that made things a little bit difficult. And you get at the end of the game there, you get some vintage Chris Paul as if he's turning back the clock to two thousand eleven. And or 2012, I should say, and in that situation, that sets up for the Thunder to take a one point lead. Luca then with the ball gets a great look, misses it. Uh, you know, you get a, you had a foul. They make both free throws. You come down and then you get two more great looks at it. Maxi gets a great look, and Luca gets a great look from three. Both miss, and the Luca one. It's a shame because with 48 seconds left, Luca knocked down uh, a crazy three over Stephen Adams at the top uh, top of the arc, and he kind of gives like the half shrug and like the little uh, you know the little flair, the showmanship to it, where he's just like, <laughs> even I'm amazed by that one. Well, you know, Luca, like you had a great you had a great game in terms of point production. You only had two turnovers one of which unfortunately came in a critical moment. I talked earlier about how when OKC had a one-point lead, uh, Luka missed on a possession. It wasn't a shot he missed. He got stripped by Gallinari, and that set up OKC going the other way. So you have to foul, and that puts you in that position. So you had a late turnover that was brutal from a guy that's not a great defender, really. I mean, he's an okay defender um, in Gallinari. And then you, you get a really good look at a three. You set up the Maxi one beautifully. I'm not, I'm not mad at you for that. That was a great one. And Maxi had had himself a great game. His first double, double of the season, 14 points, 14 boards, uh, Dwight 11 and four, but man, you just didn't get enough help from the rest of the team. I felt like, uh, the bench only like seven points in the first half. They ended up having like 21 in the second half. So better the, the point production was there, but you didn't have one guy, really step into that role uh, in this case. So Maxi was 5 of 10 from the field, 4 of 9 from 3. Luca only 3 of 16 on threes. So while you're giving the shrug and kind of like, the, oh, I amaze myself. Well, dude, three-point shooting has not been sweet to you this year. You still hit some crazy threes, but I, it's one area of your game it still frustrates me because I feel like it's while you do knock them down and I understand our system kind of encourages three point looks. I feel like you take an unnecessarily high difficulty of shots too often in that regard. Uh, eight of 12 at the line for Luca as well. So he misses another free throw in the second half. That's four free points right there. You lose the game by five. You know, it's, it's not point for point making everything up, but you see how the scenario changes real quick just if one guy uh, holds you know, to his usual kind of form in that regard. Uh, Luca, three assists shy of the triple-double, 12 of 29 from the field. For how red-hot he started the game, he cooled pretty significantly. Like, you get, you get uh, basically 40, what, 8% of your points in that first quarter. And you had your moments there, but the team as a whole wasn't able to do a lot, and I... I just felt like Luca kind of cooled just just enough to put them in that situation. Uh, other guys that were a little frustrating for me in this game, Seth Curry, dude. I, I said it before. If if we're not going to have Tim Hardaway Jr. right now, we must have Seth Curry stepping up. And three of thirteen, three of ten on threes. That's not gonna do it, dude. That's not gonna do it. That's a to me, that's a big part of it. We didn't. We were already without our second and third scorer tonight. We needed somebody, like multiple somebodies, to step up off the bench, and we didn't get it in this case. So this is a, a frustrating one for me. Delon Wright, uh, seven points. Now Delon Wright, he he was he got some timely offensive rebounds for Dallas there at one stretch of the game, but he still shoots just two of seven from the field. Uh, Justin Jackson, I think, continues to struggle a little bit. Eight points, two of eight from the field, including two of six from three. 
Uh, it was good to see Marjanovic get in there, Bobby, get him in there for about 11 minutes. This is one of those rare matchups where because of the foot speed and size of Steven Adams and OKC's lineup in general, you're able to throw more Boban out there. And I felt like he was a pretty good impact for Dallas. He was a plus eight overall in 11 minutes, four points, six boards, two of four shooting. He actually got a three point shot up, which, you know, is always a, a spectacle to see, even though he missed it. And, uh... Yeah, you just needed someone else to step up for Dallas. Like, you needed the bench in general to give you just a little bit more because in this regard, um, you know, you get less than 30 points, essentially. It's not going to be enough. It's not. You get about 28 points out of your bench uh, when you're a team that usually averages about 40. So it is what it is, man. Dallas for the game still stayed at 35% shooting. 29% 29% from three. They do knock down 15 threes, but on 51 attempts, OKC, meanwhile, may, like nearly half as many threes. Still shot abysmally, which kind of contributed to that, six of 27, but it was an impact. Dallas, 20 of 27 at the line. There you go, seven free points. Now I understand you're not going to go, like a couple games ago, they went a perfect 21 of 21 at the line, and that was the first time they had done that kind of thing as a team all year. You're not going to do that regularly, but if you had, got, if you had gotten as a team something along the lines of 23 of 27. Okay, there's three points. It's a two-point game. You know, scenarios change. Scenarios change in that regard. And uh, maybe something else shakes out different. OKC, meanwhile, gets to the line just as often, but much, you know, actually not a much better percentage. They make uh, 22 of 28. So instead of 74%, they're 79. But it really relates to they took one more free throw, but made two more. So, like, really a difference of one. Uh, Dallas held on to the ball well, 10 turnovers, again, below their season average. That wasn't the problem. They slightly out-assisted OKC, 19-18. to 18. They were out-rebounded, uh, in this case, by 7 by the Thunder, 56-49. Offensive rebounds, about even. Both teams gave up a lot of offensive rebounds. OKC got 18 offensive boards. Dallas got 17. Blocks, again, pretty even. OKC gets the edge 5-4. to four. Considering this was a game without Kristaps Porzingis, that's pretty pretty good for Dallas in that regard. Uh, steals, OKC leads 7-5. And fouls were pretty even as well. So it is what it is, man. Um, it's, it's a frustrating loss because it was right there. And when Luka hit the 3 to push the lead, I want to say to like 6 I think that's about right. When he hits the three with 48 seconds left to push it to like six or seven, I thought it was done. And then Chris Paul knocks down a three. Uh, I think Schroeder knocked down a couple free throws, and then Chris Paul hits the floater. Uh, and, you know, suddenly that's it. That's it. So I guess it was six because it pushed OKC up one at that point. And uh, you got to execute better than that. It's, it's kind of ironic that in a game in which OKC's – uh, high score man in this case, Danilo Gar- uh, Gallinari, three of eight from three. Now he's much better overall, eight of 14 overall for 20 points and three boards, but he was very slow going early on, uh, had to kind of pick it up a little bit. I think he was one of six on threes to start. So he knocked down a couple late to really get him going, but uh, it's it's a game that was right there, man. Okay, so you got a lot of balanced contributors. I've said that about their team. They've got a team that plays well, plays hard. I think Shai Gilgis Alexander had himself a quality game too. Not a crazy good percentage shooting, six of fifteen overall, zero of two on threes. I, there's something about him that I, I see, and I, I think he's going to be a pretty good, uh, a, a pretty damn good player with a little bit more seasoning. I think he has star, not superstar, but star potential uh, in him. Uh, Chris Paul has continued to be a, a really good influence and leader for this team. I, I'm I'm shocked to say this. I've been uh, a huge Chris Paul uh, hater, <laughs> frankly, throughout uh, m- the majority of uh, his career. And I don't love Chris Paul by any means, but I do appreciate what I can see he's doing for this young Thunder team. And rather than trying to force his way out in a trade – He's kind of just taking on that veteran leadership role and really mentoring a lot of these young guys, and that's kind of cool to see. Uh, Schroeder, or Schroeder, he he continued to have himself a really good game. You know, he was just like the Western Conference Player of the Week a couple 
uh, weeks ago, I think it was, he scored, and he didn't play when they played in Toronto. He missed that game with a, a sore ankle, but he had had something like five consecutive games of like 20 points or something like that. He gets it again tonight, 20 points, seven boards, seven of 17 from the field. Still not a great three-point shooter, two of seven, but uh, he he's a good driving force for them. And hey, Nerlens Noel, former Maverick, off the bench, 23 minutes, 12 points, 12 rebounds. Can't hate on that, man. Like, we'll never let Nerlens live down the fact that he and his agent turned down a four-year, $70 million contract offer from the Mavericks because that is quite literally money he will never see anywhere close to again. You could literally take the rest of his playing career and add up the earnings, and it will not meet that contract that he turned down. And it actually worked out for the best for the Mavericks because while I would like to have Nerlens Noel uh, as a as a bench player for this team, I, I see a lot of value in him for that. We know he you know he stayed in Carlisle's doghouse for you know what two thirds of his time here. He's here a year and a half, and uh, you know we know we know about Hot Dog Gate and all that other garbage associated with it. And I damn sure wouldn't have wanted him on that contract that we initially offered him. So relax. I'm not saying I want uh, that Nerlens Noel, and I wish we still had that. I'm just saying I see what he's done for the Thunder last year and this year, and I see a lot of uh, quality in that. It would be nice to have a double-double guy like that off the bench who could still give you that rim presence because he had two blocks in this game, and that's that's big for them. So, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot else to say on this, guys. Uh, I, I guess I'll cut this just a smidge short just just because of how I feel and everything. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. By the time this video goes up, it's about 10.20 now as I'm finishing recording this uh, Central Time. So I don't even think I'm going to see it to midnight uh, in terms of staying awake for it. But to everyone who's already ushered in the new year or will usher in the new year before you get a chance to watch this video, Happy Holidays, uh, Happy New Year, and uh, I will talk with you guys real soon. But that's it for my time. I'm DDP. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.